Hi Best Buds, it's Kathy with Kathy's Garden. I'm so happy that you've joined me today. Today we're going to make large book page envelopes. But first let's have our shout out to Nancy the Messy Crafter, Carolyn JW19, Linda upon Calico Hill, Com Candy Mom, Susie Keller, Leanne and Denise. I appreciate each and every one of you. All right, I bought this at our used bookstore here in town. It's called Christmas Treasury Classic, Family Classic Edition. It's a very thick book. I've used lots of pages out of it so far. Publications International LTD. That's what I know about it. I love it. What it has inside are these very large pages of pictures and music oh that's upside down because <laughs> i've already removed those here we go you can see the pictures here they're very beautiful and i just wanted to use them in some of my christmas ephemera so let's begin so what i have here i've removed a few of these papers and i have inked around the edge of these two this one i have not this one I've already inked and put some gold paint on the edge. So we all know how to ink the edge of our papers. So let's go ahead and let me show you how I gild the edges. So this is folk art enamels metallic gold. And you can buy this at craft shops. You can buy it at Walmart. And it's just a beautiful gold color. So I'm just going to open this up and put some right on my glass mat there. I'm going to use my makeup sponge, actually. That's what this is, a makeup sponge. And I'm just going to put it right on the edge. And I'm not, um, I'm not being really picky about how it goes on. I'm just... Putting it on the edge, see how that kind of, but it's going to be just absolutely fine. You just kind of lay it on just like this. Now, I used my finger on a lot of them, but I kind of started seeing that there was a high chance of me uh, getting myself a paper cut. So that's why I switched to my makeup brush. So I did this side. I don't know, can you see how beautiful that is? And I'm just going to turn it over because I need to do this side as well. So I'm just laying it on just like this. So after I do this, <clears throat> I am going to go ahead and get this dried. And then I will be right back and we will continue. See you in a bit. All right, I'm all back. Everything's dried. We're ready to make our envelope out of this. Now you can make your envelope outside with this nice little wording right here, or you can choose to use the picture. Let's go ahead and use the picture because that's what this video is about. So I don't want my envelope to have the flap here and my man or my people, huh, any of them, to be upside down. So I'm going to make sure I turn it this way and I turn it over. I like to line my points up on my grid and then I take my ruler and I lay my ruler point to point here. So let's line this up. I'm not using a envelope maker. We're going to make our own. I'm just putting a pencil line about an inch and a half long. You can do it just a tiny little bit. I tend to make mine just a little bigger, very lightly, because I am going to erase that line here in just a second after I turn my corners and use my other four, other two corners, and I'm just going to do the exact same thing. Just making sure I get it as close to this line without going over. There we are and just put another line. So what you're going to have is you're going to have this X right here in the center. It's very light, but it is there. Now what I'm going to do is grab my eraser. It's my gum eraser. I love them so much. And I'm going to turn this over to make sure. Uh, I think I want my flap to be 
think I want this to be my flap. So I'm going to turn it just like this. I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to put it right at the intersection of my two lines and I'm going to crease that. Just like this. I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to touch the point of the other side. Just like this. So now we look just like this. Now you're able to erase the center lines that you used to square everything up. Oh, that's something else I should have said in the very beginning. And that is, is that no matter what size your image is, it needs to be a square. So it needs to be the same distance here as it is here. This happens to be eight and a half this way and eight and a half this way. Maybe your image is only six, so it would be six by six, or three by three, or whatever your image is, or the size of the envelope that you want to make to go into your journal, happy mail, or whatever it is that you're making, you need to have a square. Okay, that's highly important, otherwise you're going to get the wonkiest envelope. All right, so we have our corners. We're back at this stage here. Now we're going to take the bottom, making sure that that is what we wanted. Yes, that's what we wanted. We're going to take the bottom and we're going to flip it up. Now, I like to turn it this way and I like to look once again at my grid and I'm going to fold it about a fourth of an inch. So I'm pulling this down just a tad and I'm going to fold this. I'm still moving it along my grid to line it up. I'm going to fold it approximately an inch and a half. I'm going to do the best I can here. All right, so we've got that folded an inch and a half, and I'm creasing it very well. There we are. Now this is our flap. We're going to do the same thing, and we're going to just going to kind of help it here a little bit. We're going to pull this down. I'm actually going to do about a half an inch here. So I'm going to mark that just like this. And we're going to really crease it well. Now we're going to open it up. And right here at our places where we folded, there's going to be a little pie shape. We're going to trim that out. That's going to take the bulk out of our envelope. So we're just going to lightly pull that out. We're going to do the same here. And I like to cut on the outside of the fold. I don't cut on the inside and I don't cut right on the fold. I kind of take a, just a little bit more out. So this is my last one, just like this. Now, we have not colored that or <clears throat> inked it or anything, and that needs to be done. We need to go ahead and do that, especially before we glue this bottom flap down. So I'm just going to bring my vintage photo in, and I'm just going to ink right here. You probably can get away with not laying down any of the gold paint. Now you can also do it a different way. <clears throat> you could fold everything up and then use the your ink to ink the creases and then gold everything at once. You can do that. That probably would be a little more efficient. I just decided to start the video the other way. So there we are with that. So we've all inked that up. I think it would be very pretty to put gold on the outside, but we can do that at the very last because if we do it now, I'll have to take another break and dry it. So once again, this is our flap because we want our people to be up. I'm going to turn it over. You can see here that the point right here is out, is sticking up above this right here. We want to lower that just a tiny bit, so we're just going to fold it. 
just take a little fold and fold it just like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I actually am going to ink that really very quickly here. And I'm going to take my Tombow glue and I'm just going to glue this flap down just a little bit. Just like that. Usually I put a little paper clip on and give it a few minutes to make sure it really grabs hold, but we don't have that kind of time right this moment. So what I'd like to do is I would like to place my glue and I'd like to close this up, making it an envelope. Oop, let's get it back in frame better. So instead of putting glue here to here on these flaps, because you're not going to have glue right here in the center, that it doesn't come together right there. And then that would be a sticky mess and you run the risk of gluing your envelope closed. It's much easier if you glue from where you folded it down to right here where it connects to the larger part of the envelope. So I'm just going to lay my little bead of glue right there and I'm going to do the exact same on this side. So I'm going to get this going right there. There we go. Now let's pull this up and make sure that it's all stuck in place. Now I do like to take my paper clips and I like to go ahead and paper clip it closed for the first few moments just to make sure that it is completely completely together and it's not trying to pop up. So I'm just going to get those on just like that and that's how I do it. Just like that, very simply. Let's go ahead and turn it on this side. Oh my goodness, now isn't that cute? That is an adorable little envelope. Now we can further embellish this. I have this little piece of ephemera and it just says happy a happy Christmas, that's what it says. I have this one that I've already used part of it. I thought, well, that would fit right there. It says Merry, and no, it does not. It says Christmas greetings to and from. So you could actually put that on and use that as part of, you can write your people's name on there. If you're going to maybe stick it in the Christmas tree, maybe it has something special inside for the person that you're giving it to. Or you can maybe just put a little Christmas tree. Now, I don't think this is quite big enough. I think that's kind of the wrong size. I like this and I like this, but I really think I like this the very best. So I'm going to choose to use this. And I'm simply going, I've already inked around the edges. I'm simply going to glue it on just like this. I'm going to have to move this one out of the way, see exactly where I want to place it. I don't think I want to cover up all of my ribbon that's at the base. It's not real ribbon, it's just that I'm calling that a ribbon, a strip. Like this is the strip, it kind of looks like a piece of ribbon. I'm just going to place it right above that because I think that's so pretty right there. And I want to highlight the berries on this wreath. And I think I choose, I'm choosing to highlight the red ones so I'm just putting little a little dab of glue on the berries and then I'm going to take my very small let's see I gotta get over here there we are my very small jewels and I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna grab my pin I'm going to put some glue on my pin and I am going to fish out my red berries just like that. It's a very simple way of doing it. I My fingers just wouldn't be able to do that without using some kind of little tool and this tool is just a pin. And we're just going to pick it up. I actually got two red ones there and I need to separate them. So I'm going to continue to do this. I have a, actually I don't need to. You can see exactly what this is going to look like because I'm just going to keep going and it just makes it look richer and just, it just brings it to life, shall we say. So let me show you some other ones that I've done. I've done this one. Isn't this one pretty? Now it's just the music paper that I used 
and then inside it looks like that. I think these are quite attractive. Now I took this music paper and I put some glitter paint on it. There you can see the glitter paint. And then I put stars. This says the first Noel and I just thought that was just beautiful. And then there's the other side. I took a piece of music paper. So this book was a music paper book and I made a large envelope from that. So here's out of the book again, and it's a piece of music, and it had a picture up here, and I just added some stars to the tree. I think that's beautiful. And then here's another picture out of the book, just like that. This back part is very pretty. Just That just turned out gorgeous, didn't it? You never know how the papers are going to fold out and how they'll look at the end. There's baby Jesus in the manger with the animals around. And then on this side, see, isn't that so pretty? This is really a lovely book to work out of. Here's one of the animals that was with baby Jesus in the barn. And it just really turned out wonderful. There are little shepherds in the field with their flock and they notice the star. And there we are. And then we have one last one of Joseph and Mary on their way to these stables. And it's like that. Oh my goodness. If you have enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I invite you to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll see you there, guys. Bye now.